Hi students, welcome back to Wisdom Academy YouTube page. In the previous video, we were learning current electricity chapter where I talked about Ohm's law. I think after learning about Ohm's law, you understood what is the resistance. It is the opposition to the flow of current and the device which provides resistance is called as resistor. Mathematically, resistance R is equal to V by I. I also wrote what is 1 Ohm. 1 Ohm will be equal to 1 volt by 1 ampere. Okay, today we are going to see on what factors the resistance depends. So resistance is the property which depends upon various factors like it depends upon length. It depends upon length of the conductor. It depends upon area of cross section. It depends upon the nature of material. It also depends upon the physical conditions. So if I talk about length, so it is found that as the length of the wire is increased, its resistance also will increase. So suppose I have one meter of wire and I have three meter of wire. Then you will find that three meter of wire will have more resistance than one meter of wire. It was also found that resistance is inversely proportional to area of cross section. So here if I write R1 and here if I write R2, then R2 will be more than R1. If there are two wires, one of less area of cross section, another one of higher area of cross section, it was found that of same length, this is R1 and this is R2, R1 is more than R2. So the area of cross section is getting increased, the resistance will get reduced. Nature of material means if I take nichrome wire and if I take copper wire, they both will have different resistance because their nature is different. But different materials will have different resistance. And physical condition means if I change the temperature and pressure, then resistance value also will change. The increase in temperature will increase the resistance. Why all these things happens? I will tell you in detail in the next video. So if I combine all these things, I will come to know R is proportional to L by A. If I remove proportionality, I have to add a constant and that constant is equal to rho. This rho is known as resistivity or in otherwise also called as specific resistance. It is also called as specific resistance. So now resistivity is a property which is independent of the length and area of cross section. Very important thing. This resistivity, it depends on nature and physical condition. But it is independent of what length and area of cross section. So one meter wire or a 10 meter wire both will have same resistivity. So now resistance was a property which was changing based upon the length changing, area of cross-section changing. But resistivity is a property which does not depend upon these factors. So we classify the materials based upon its resistivity only. If you find the SI unit of resistance, we can put from here and get R, rho is equal to R into A by L. R is ohm, area is meter square, length is meter, this two gets cancelled. So I get the SI unit of resistivity as ohm meter. SI unit of resistivity will be ohm meter. So as I said, resistivity is a property by which we will, de we will uh, classify the materials also, whether it is conductor, insulator or semiconductor. So if I tell that uh, range now, if the resistivity is uh, between the range of 10 to the power minus A to 10 to the power minus 6 ohm meter, then that kind of material is known as conductor. So conductors will have resistivity lying from 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 6 ohm meter. The materials whose resistivity is greater than 10 to the power 4 ohm meter, these materials are called as insulators. They are called as insulators. So insulators are the materials which are having the resistivity more than 10 to the power 4 ohm meter. And the materials having resistivity between this range, that is, it is from 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power 4 ohm meter. That kind of material is called as semiconductor. Now, what are conductors 
conductors are the materials which allow the flow of charge from them and since the charge is allowed to move inside them they will conduct heat and electricity that's what happens in the case of conductors now different materials will have different range of conduction how much it can conduct will depend upon what resistivity it is having for example i'll say copper is a material which will have very low resistivity so it will allow the current to move very fast and that's the reason we use copper wires in the domestic circuit if you see all your wires uh, your uh, uh, electrical equipments made up of or your domestic wiring inside the home everything will be mostly copper because copper will have very low resistivity on the other hand nichrome is a metal it is a conductor which has a very high resistivity so nichrome is used in the place where we want the current and its heating effect so in many places where we want to have heating effect of electric current we will use nichrome material why we use nichrome because nichrome will have high resistivity if i talk about insulators yeah if it is more than about 5 4 ohm meter it will call as insulators some materials will be having much much insulation property in the range of 10 to power 12 ohm meter also semiconductors are the materials whose resistivity will lie in between conductor and insulator that means if i want the material to behave as a conductor i can make it behave if i want the material to behave as, as insulator we can make it behave semiconductors like germanium and silicon find lots and lots of use in the today's uh, world like everything if you say all the electronic devices we have semiconductors involved semiconductors are playing a very major role in today's telecommunication world there is one more classification of material called as superconductors some people would have heard it superconductors we are going to talk about this in the coming chapter but what are superconductors they are the materials who have very high conductivity or i should say who have almost zero resistivity and how to make the resistivity to be zero it is possible at very low temperatures so it has found that at very low temperatures at very low temperatures the resistivity starts getting decreased and at very low temperatures we get almost zero resistivity and that zero resistivity will make the property of superconductivity because conductivity will become very high let us talk about next topic which is current density what is current density it's it like when you hear the word density something which com comes to our mind is related to uh, volume like a mass per unit volume is called as density it is not like that in the case of current density current density is amount of charge flowing per second per unit area i will repeat once again the amount of charge flowing per second per unit area held this area should be held normal to the direction of flow of charges what it means if charges are moving in that direction then your area which is taken should be normal to the direction of flow suppose this is the direction of flow then the area should be held like this in such a way that its vector is normal to this charges direction so let us write uh, it is represented by small j so small j is charge per unit second so i will write q by t by area right so i can write q by t i so i can write j is equal to i by a this is the formula of current density so now this is the action of current then a should be always normal in case suppose there is a condition where a is not normal and it is at some angle like this it is making some angle theta with the i mean the direction of current so i should take the normal component in that case that is a n cos theta so i can i have to replace a by a n cos theta so i can write the general formula of i as i is equal to j a n cos theta cannot write, write i is equal to j dot a now j dot a and we know very well that dot product of two vector quantities is always scalar i hope you remember from your knowledge of vectors that dot product of two vector quantities is always a scalar once again i am proving that current is a scalar quantity right what is the si unit of current density it is current by area so it will be ampere by meter square so ampere by meter square is the si unit of current density that is equal to ampere by meter square 
one more thing to be kept in mind there is some more things called as conductance and conductivity what will be conductance conductance will be the reciprocal of resistance so one by resistance will be called as conductance same way for conductivity uh, for resistivity we have conductivity so if i write conductivity it will be equal to 1 by resistivity generally we represent conductivity by sigma so it was rho 1 by rho and this will become sigma sigma is equal to 1 by rho and conductance is by g g is equal to 1 by r so if you if you ask if they ask you what is conductance it is a reciprocal of resistance what is conductivity it is a reciprocal of resistivity we know ohm's law in scalar form that is equal to v is equal to ir so v is equal to ir was the ohm's law in scalar form we can convert this into vector form also how we can conduct uh, convert so suppose e is electric field in the length of wire l then what will be the potential v that will be equal to e into l isn't it because we know that potential is equal to electric field into length in, into distance also from ohm's law we know that v is equal to ir also we know v is equal to ir equate these two you will get i r is equal to e into l so r i can write it as rho l by a and that is equal to e into l l l gets cancelled so what i get from here i by a what is i by a this now we have seen it is j so j rho is equal to uh, l get cancelled from here so e will remain e so j rho is equal to e is the uh, ohm's law in vector form j is the current density rho is the resistivity and e is the electric field so this is the way you can write the ohm's law in vector form i want to write in some other way i can also write because i know that rho i can make it to go like this j is equal to e by rho and what is 1 by rho it is sigma conductivity so i can also write this as j is equal to e dot sigma this one way we can represent the ohm's law in vector form so what if you ask what is vector quantity yeah definitely i can say that current density is a vector quantity e is a vector quantity so this is the way you can represent the ohm's law in vector form let us talk about resistors now so i told you what is resistor it is a device which which ha has resistance it's called as resistor so resistor uh, broadly of two types one thing is wire bound resistors which are made by bonding the wires or winding the wires and we have something called as carbon resistor which is the most commonly used resistor called as carbon resistor so carbon resistor if you if you type in google itself carbon resistor you'll get a lot of results so it looks something like this it will be like a cylindrical shape thing in that two wires will be coming out and on this we will have some color coding there will be some colors like this so three colors will be together and here color may be there or one may, may not be there so three things three bands will be together and one band will be little away that sometimes may not be also there so why what does this band indicate and how to calculate the resistance from this bands i am going to teach you now so these bands every band has some specific value the first band is called as first significant first significant number second band is second significant number third band is decimal multiplier and the fourth band is tolerance i'll talk about each band to you what is this first significant number second significant number decimal multiplier and tolerance for that you must know what is the value of each color so to remember the color there are n number of colors to remember that there is small formula given in many books also you can remember as you want and the formula goes like this it is b b roy of great britain has very good wife i will repeat again b b roy of great britain has very good wife why we want to remember like this because it is the order in which the color coding is there what is b this is black this b is brown so r is red o is orange y is yellow g is green this b is 
ब्लू वी वायलेट जी एस ग्रे एंड डब्ल्यू एस वाइट नाउ द सेम ऑर्डर वी हैव द नंबर्स दैट इज दिस इज द सिग्निफिकेंट नंबर ओके सो सिग्निफिकेंट नंबर गोज फ्रॉम हेयर जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट एंड नाइन and if i talk about decimal multiplier it goes in the same order decimal multiplier goes like this 10 to the power 0 10 to the power 1 10 to the power 2 10 to the power 3 10 to the power 4 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 6 10 to the power 7 power 8 and 10 to the power 9 so if a particular resistor is having third band as some color we will use decimal multiplier value if it is first or second band we will use significant number fourth band it is tolerance and that tolerance can be of three different colors that is either gold or silver or no color nothing can be present no color is there so if it is gold it has a tolerance of plus or minus 5% if it is silver it is plus or minus 10% if no color is there plus or minus 20% this tolerance it means that whatever value of resistance i am finding how much it can vary like sometimes a resistor will not have the same value of what you have bought it during buying time so buying time you may you may buy it for some 20000 her uh, ohms but when you use it may be not 20000 ohms the reason for that is it will change by a little bit so how much will it change how much it can vary is given by this tolerance now let us assume that there is one carbon resistor which is having band colors like this this is brown color second is yellow color third band is blue color and fourth band is silver color and they asked you find the resistance of this resistor so first thing is brown color so what is the significant number of brown One, so I write one. Second band is yellow color. I write the significant number four. Then multiplier, blue, blue is six, ten to the power six. Silver tolerance plus or minus silver tolerance ten percent. So the resistance value of this resistor will be fourteen. Ten watts is means mega, fourteen mega ohm plus or minus ten percent. so in this 14 mega ohm it can vary up to 1.4 mega ohm plus or minus that is the meaning of this thing similar way one more example i can take that there is a resistor which has three color bands like this one thing is green another thing is blue and the third thing is orange and there is no color present in the fourth then what will be its resistance its resistance will be green green is 5 blue blue is 6 into multiplier o oh, orange is 10 power 3 ohm plus or minus no color means 20% so this is 56 10 power 3 means kilo kilo ohm plus or minus 20% is the resistance of this carbon resistor so when you buy resistors on the box you will have this kind of values what is the resistor resistance with how much tolerance and that is calculated based upon this principle only so in today's session we have learnt about how to calculate the resistance of any carbon resistor so what we have seen in today's class first we saw what are the factors on which resistance depends we learnt about resistivity and we learned that resistivity is the factor which does not depend upon the length and area of cross section and that's the reason we use resistivity for the classification of materials we saw that the materials which have resistivity from the range of 10 to minus 8 to minus 6 it comes under the category of conductors above 10 to the power of 4 uh, ohm meter comes under the category of insulators and 10 to the power minus 6 to 4 10 to the power of 4 ohm meter comes under the category of semiconductor i also talked about superconductors and then i talked about current density conductivity and conductance and now i have winded up the session by talking about carbon resistor and how to find the value of resistance of any carbon resistor so in my coming video i will go further in this chapter till then like the video share with your friends and subscribe our channel thank you